Family and fellow soldiers, I'm the Professor, and this is the Moment of Truth. And now, the Friday Crime Report. Sunday, December 13th, 2020, Elk View, West Virginia, 10.30 a.m. Nathan Gandy had been walking his dog that Sunday morning when he was stopped by an old man. The man was Timothy Saunders. Gandy recognized him as the father of his next-door neighbors. But the old man was in a panic. He said he had been trying to reach his daughter over the phone for days, but hadn't gotten an answer. So he decided to come over in person. Saunders screamed at Gandy, Have you seen anyone over here? That was when Timothy Saunders revealed that he had just found three of his relatives dead inside the house. Inside the home, Timothy Saunders found the corpse of his daughter, Risa Saunders, along with her partner, Daniel DeLong. Their bodies were in their bed with gunshot wounds to their heads. Also in the bedroom was one of their children, Gage Ripley, age 12. By this point, Nathan Gandy was calling the Kanawha County Sheriff's Department. When the deputies arrived, they searched the home and found a fourth murder victim, Jameson Long, whose body had been underneath his bed. Jameson was only three years old. The authorities weren't exactly sure when the family had been killed, but they estimated that it had to have been within 96 hours of their arriving on the scene, so they could have been dead as long as since December 9th, 2020. Timothy Saunders told the deputies that there was another child who lived there, but who was missing. Gavin Smith, age 16. The police searched the area, but couldn't find Gavin. They didn't know it at the time, but Gavin had been hiding in the woods when the authorities arrived. Gavin then went to the house that his girlfriend was living at. Her name was Rebecca Walker. Police soon found out about Walker and that she lived with her grandmother. By 4 p.m., they had gone to that house. Court records show that they found Gavin Smith hiding behind a dresser in a third-floor bedroom. They found articles of clothing both on him and near him that tested positive for blood. They would find that the blood matched Gage and Jameson's. Police arrested Gavin Smith but didn't give out his name due to his age. They announced that they had also arrested Smith's girlfriend, Rebecca. Gavin was charged with four counts of first-degree murder. Rebecca got hit with four counts of first-degree murder as well. The investigation would reveal that Gavin and Rebecca had been very close with each other and that the motive for the slaughter was that Gavin's parents weren't allowing him to spend time with Rebecca, but they continued to have contact nonetheless through text messages and video chats. According to Walker's attorney, Gavin had been telling her that he was being abused at home. Gavin's attorney claimed that there was no malice to this crime, so the first-degree murder charge was unwarranted. Well, Gavin might have thought that his bond with Rebecca was unbreakable, but clearly she had other plans. In July of 2021, she took a plea deal with the prosecutors that would allow the murder charges to be dropped in return for her cooperation in testifying against Smith. Her charges were reduced to four counts of accessory after the fact, a charge that only carries about two and a half years per count. Rebecca testified that Gavin had tried to run away from home but kept getting caught and that he was angry about having to return home time and again. She said that several weeks before the murders, Gavin had told her he wanted to kill his family. She also testified that rather than be horrified or shocked, she actually agreed with him that this would be a good idea because it would allow them to finally be together. Rebecca testified that on the day of the mass murder, Gavin Smith had set up a live video chat with her so that she could watch the mass murder taking place. Smith then proceeded to kill his parents and Gage, his 12-year-old brother, before returning to the video call. For a moment, it seemed as if he might actually leave, but when he heard the baby crying in the background, Gavin returned and killed three-year-old Jameson. Now, Rebecca Walker claimed at trial that the screen went black, so she claimed she didn't actually see the murders taking place. But she also testified that she had been cheering Gavin on during the carnage, telling him to hurry up and do it. Please hurry up and do it. Get it over with. She said that's what she was doing while the slaughter was taking place. Oh yeah, the screen went black so she couldn't actually see it, but she was telling him, hurry up and do it. Please hurry up and do it. Get it over with. So this wasn't some demonic punk who was killing his family because he thought that it would impress Rebecca. He did it in large part because she wanted him to. Rebecca said that during the slaughter, she could hear three-year-old Jameson crying in the background. 
So she was on the call when Gavin murdered that baby, but she would claim that she didn't see the baby being killed and why she didn't want him to kill the infant. But of course, even if we were silly enough to believe that her video feed conveniently went out while the audio feed continued, you still cannot escape the fact that she heard the gunshot that ended baby Jameson Long's life. But isn't it interesting that he wanted to live stream the murders? Where have we seen that M.O. before? Some lunatic with a gun goes into a supermarket in Buffalo and videos himself gunning down black people. Or Kyle Rittenhouse in Kenosha. He was just one year older than Gavin when he committed a mass shooting, killing two of his victims. This society glorifies teenage killers. It refuses to punish them and then is shocked when they feel like they can do whatever they want and then they go out and do it. And of course, they have to show the world what they've done. They want everyone to see this, as if they don't think that they've committed a crime at all, because that's how they've been socialized by this society. Now, last month, Gavin Smith was finally convicted of three counts of first-degree murder, one count of second-degree murder, and one count of using a firearm during the commission of a felony. And he was sentenced just last week, but because he committed this mass murder while he was 16, he was sentenced to life with mercy, meaning that he can apply for a pardon when he becomes eligible for parole, which would be after he serves 15 years of his sentence. So why was he allowed to have life with mercy? Because Virginia law doesn't allow for a juvenile to be sentenced to life in prison without also giving them the option of mercy. That's a law written just for the purpose of making sure teenage mass shooters can commit their atrocities and still have a chance to get out one day. Keep in mind, these are the same politicians in West Virginia who tell us that they're all about law and order and zero tolerance for crime, etc. Well, we see that they wrote the laws to give them leniency for people who they know are most likely to commit certain types of crimes. In September 2021, Rebecca Walker was sentenced to just 10 years in prison. She'll become eligible for parole in June of this year. Imagine that. In just five months from now, this little psychopath who cheered on her boyfriend to kill his entire family, including a baby, she could be right back out on the streets again. Looking for her next victim, no doubt. Again, this is one of those crimes that happened out in the sticks of West Virginia, in these rural areas where this mess is going down. Places you've never even heard of. And thanks to the white media, you usually never even hear about these crimes. So much for if it bleeds, it leads. That's the reason why I do these crime reports. You can see all of these mass murders that have been taking place that the white media is not telling you about. But if somebody gets shot on the south side of Chicago, you will hear about that. Rebecca Walker, who has the largest cranium on the shortest body that I've ever seen, was an accomplice to murder, including that of a baby. She knew that this slaughter was going to take place several weeks in advance, and not only did she lack even the smallest iota of decency to warn the family that this psychopath was going to kill them, not only did she not even alert the authorities, she actually approved of this sick plan to murder an entire family. And I assume that afterwards, she and her psycho boyfriend were supposed to run off together. That is, until he inevitably kills her too, no doubt. The white media also bears huge responsibility for this atrocity. And the reason why is, if the white media is not trying to ignore these crimes or trying to rationalize them, then they're openly glorifying them. You see movies like Natural Born Killers. And what was the plot of that movie? You had Woody Harrelson and Juliette Lewis who were a man and woman couple madly in love with each other and also killing everyone they came across. That movie was basically just a cross-country version of what these two murderous inbreds did. There's still questions about how Gavin, at 16 years of age, was even able to get his hands on a gun, but as we all know by now, because we've seen the scenario play itself out enough times, the people who live out in those areas are armed to the teeth. Now, the politicians in these rural areas push the lie that, well, they need all these guns to protect themselves from black people. But, as we've seen in Pike County, Idaho, and here and elsewhere, these residents need to be more worried about one another. This is a large part of what's a big draw for people to go live out in those rural areas in the middle of nowhere. And now you're getting a much clearer picture of what happens in these areas. Wiping out an entire family, including children, over a child custody dispute. Killing one's entire family, including a three-year-old baby, just because you're mad you can't see your girlfriend. 
This is what happens when society allows certain people to be immune from criticism and largely immune from the law. They think they can do anything, and usually do, but it won't be anything pleasant. The principle of genetic immunity from law is so important, so vital in this society, that they'll shoehorn it into the laws even for cases like this. What cruel irony that Gavin Smith was given a sentence of mercy when he showed his own family absolutely none. And that's this week's Friday Crime Report. Keep your eyes open and stay on alert, because there's a lot worse criminals out there than the ones the white corporate media chooses to show you. Good day, and be one. I'd like to take a moment to mention some of our contributors. Divine Lady, Sulaiman Alaji, Sakina Collins, Rowan Wings, and Roger Shaw. Salute to them and thank you to everyone for listening, liking, and sharing this message. Black empowerment only exists because of you.